Midwest Whitetail is brought to you by Realtree, Hoyt Archery, Muddy Outdoors, Fuse Accessories, Trophy Rock, Frigid Forage, Scott Archery, Cabela's, Rocket Broadheads, Woods Zero Turn Mowers, Bloodsport Arrows, Redneck Hunting Blinds, Scentmaster, Yeti Coolers, Scent Lock, and Nikon. Welcome to the West White Tail. In today's episode, we're going to do a little turkey hunting. Drew's got a tag, and it's a beautiful still morning. We're hearing lots of birds gobbling. Hopefully we can get one to come up into the set. As the episode goes on, I'm going to talk about food plot strategy. We also have a segment in here from Pastor Paul where he shows us how to put a wrap on a shotgun for turkey hunting. So I hope you enjoyed today's show. We're going to finish out our turkey hunt first, then we're going to take a look at some food plots and talk about what I'm going to plant this year, where, and why. Our first setup this morning didn't work, but there is a bird gobbling across the valley on the next ridge over. He's not gobbling a lot, but at least it's something. Uh, the birds have really gone quiet once they hit the ground. It's a really, really beautiful still morning. I don't know why we're not getting more gobbling activity from the birds. But we'll try this guy. He hasn't gobbled for about five minutes, but he was going pretty good there before. And then uh, try a couple more setups and start talking about food plots here today. hardcore turkey hunter so it's easy for me to get distracted when I'm turkey hunting. The spot I'm kneeling in right now is one of the food plots down in the valley. In fact, this is the food plot right next to where uh, we put that trophy rock out a couple weeks ago. This is one of the, I'd say, core areas of this farm. We don't hunt up down in this bottom very much at all. There's a stand about 200 yards behind me or so. It's a great place to uh, kind of anchor your deer. And I have a number of these kind of spots. They're, they're food plots that you can't really hunt, but they're in these sanctuary type areas or these spots of the farm that are you know, real challenging to get into. But you don't want your deer drifting away. So you want to make sure that you've got some of these types of spots, even in the areas that you can't hunt. Uh, this one was big and beastie last summer, late last summer. And we got in and frost seeded this on top of the snow this winter. But you can see the clover is just starting to pop up. And we've had just enough warm days where with that frost seeding that we did on the snow, that seed really germinated well. And that's a pretty good strategy. You can go big and beastie in the summer. And then that winter, you can frost seed clover into it. And that gives you, this won't, be anything for the spring but it will produce clover and deer food during the summer and then if it turns out real well you can just keep it cleaned up and you can keep clover in here or if it's just kind of patchy uh, one of the strategies then would be to plow it down put that green vegetation and green growth back into the ground again to produce nitrogen and come right back in here with the big and beastie again uh, this summer this is an important part of our farm we want to make sure we've got uh, places like this where the deer can feel real comfortable and there's plenty to eat there. We don't even mess with them. Uh, this is sort of where they live. And then we hunt them on the fringes out away from these spots where the advantage is more in our favor. Down in here they've got the advantage with the swirling winds. Up on the ridges we've got a lot better advantage. more spot that we're going to try this morning to fire up a gobbler but in the meantime here's a segment from Pastor Paul where he shows us how to put a camouflage skin on a shotgun. So on today's show what we're going to talk about is how we can take a stock pump shotgun like this the Mossberg 500 series and turn it into a nice camo wrapped turkey gun like this Mossberg 500 series pump shotgun. So the process 
to camo wrap a stock shotgun really is not that hard and it's gonna take roughly about an hour's worth of your time, which will be time well vested to help you bag that spring gobbler. We're using a product today that's made by Camo Wraps and this is the Camo Shotgun Kit. They also have other kits for various other types of firearms, but this is specifically made for a pump shotgun. Within the kit, they're gonna give you a squeegee that will be used to help the vinyl camo wrap adhere to the gun. You'll wanna get you a X-Acto knife of some type, uh, a razor blade to make the small cuts that you're gonna need during this process. One other tool you might need is a Phillips head screwdriver uh, to simply remove the butt plate off the back side uh, of your stock. So once you've got your firearm disassembled, the next thing that's gonna be important to do is to actually clean the firearm. And that can be done very simply by just taking some rubbing alcohol and using a rag with rubbing alcohol to totally clean each and every part of the gun that's gonna have the vinyl camo wrap on it so that the vinyl will have a better chance to adhere to the firearm. So now that you have your firearm disassembled and clean, it's time to start the process. Once you open the packaging, you're gonna find a very nice set of instructions to help you understand the process and to also see some of the cuts that you're gonna to have to make in order for the vinyl wrap to go around various pieces of the firearm. As we detailed earlier, there's gonna be a squeegee that you're gonna use throughout this process that's included. And the actual wrap itself comes in six easy to identify pieces. You're gonna have two camo stickers for the actual stock, two for the receiver, one for the forend, and one for the barrel. The barrel will actually accommodate up to a 32 inch. You're gonna simply take that wrap, put it around the stock, around the receiver, around the forend, and eventually working your way through the barrel. Once you've actually got each piece in place, it will be necessary to use your X-Acto knife to make some small relief cuts to help the actual vinyl sticker wrap around the stock or the receiver. You may also have to make some minor cuts around like the safety, the port in which you load up your shells, and then the ejection port here. So there'll be some minor cuts that you need to make along the way. So after each section of the gun has the vinyl camel wrap placed on it, you're simply gonna take this squeegee and you're just gonna go over each and every part, working out any minor air bubbles that you may see making sure that the vinyl is adhering to the actual firearm itself. Once you've got the gun totally wrapped, it's gonna help protect this gun while you're out running and gunning through that spring turkey woods, and it's just gonna look really, really nice and help that barrel stay hidden while you're trying to chase that old spring gobbler. The camo wrap system itself only costs $25 plus shipping, so we're excited to put this product to the test in the spring turkey woods. That bird that we came down in here across this valley up on the next ridge has stopped gobbling. So, as easily as I get distracted, we're back on the subject of food plots here. This little plot that I'm standing in, we didn't frost seed this one. Normally, these really small plots, either you have to be in clover or something like big and beastie, because if you try to plant a row crop type food plot in here, it gets wiped out too easy during the summer. But this year I'm going to go ahead and put beans into this one, beans into that next little small one, and then beans into that uh, couple acre field beyond it. And the reason I do that is it gives me a way to really kill off whatever weeds are there with the Roundup Ready beans. Because you can hit them a couple of times, you know, right when you plant, and then sometime mid-summer. That really cleans up the plots. And then when you rotate into the next crop, whether it's clover or big and beastie, you've got a really clean seed bed to work with. And if the beans do get wiped out, then I'm going to go ahead and till this up and put it into Big and Beastie during the late summer. So you got really a plan A and a plan B here. Plan A would be for the beans to do well, but if they don't, then we fall back on uh, going in and putting the Big and Beastie in during the late summer. So it's uh, sort of foolproof. If you go into a spot like this with only plan A, you can end up with nothing in the fall. So that's why that Big and Beastie is so valuable. We've used that to save an awful lot of food plots over the last few years. Okay, now I'm in that next food plot down the valley, and this was clover last year. 
but as you can see, it's really starting to get weedy. Normally, you'll get two really good years out of clover. Sometimes you'll get three. Usually in the third year, you've got to spray it. I planted this food plot back in 2011, and in 2012, this was the most incredibly lush uh, patch of clover that I've ever seen in my life. This was that area where that double G4 buck was living, and I think he spent the whole summer of 2012 on this little one acre uh, clover plot right here. As long as we're on the subject of talking about clover, I want to talk a little bit about how you maintain clover food plots. Clover is uh, very sensitive to the fertilizer level. And if you do a good job with the fertility of the soil, you can get an extra year out of your clover. And for sure, it'll be a lot more lush and a lot more attractive to the deer. And there's a couple reasons why that's important. The deer get the minerals that they use for growing antlers and for you know the does for lactating and just for general uh, body health. Basically, fertilizer is nothing more than, than a mineral and the plants pull it up and the deer consume it that way. So clover is really good at extracting this mineral from the soil and transferring it to the deer. The other thing is how often you mow it to keep the plot clean. Generally, in the first two years of a, of a clover plot's life, I'll just mow it once, usually in June, and that really cleans it up, it takes all the grasses typically down, uh, removes all the broad leaves because the clover competes really hard and comes back and, and shades everything out. Uh, by the third year, you really do have to start doing some spraying to keep the grasses sort of at bay. Uh, mowing alone won't be enough. Now I'm in the third food plot down this valley. This one might be as big as three acres. I know it's at least two acres, but if you look behind me, you can see some washouts. And this plot has, has been in a rotation of corn to beans for probably the last seven or eight years. And the soil is just uh, not holding up to that type of a rotation. So I'm gonna have to come down into this end of it and uh, smooth it out real good and then put clover in here or something that's not gonna be as likely to wash as what you generally would get, especially with beans. Beans doesn't, don't do a very good job of holding the soil in place. Normally with these bigger plots like this, I'm trying to put them into some type of a row crop, like a grain, whether it's beans or, or corn, uh, generally. And I, I have planted sorghum uh, in the past too, and that's done pretty well. So those are kind of my, my three go-tos, if you want to call it that, for uh, my grain plantings. The, the problem with corn that we run into is uh, if you get into any kind of a stress condition, like we've had these past two summers, the deer will go in there and they'll eat the ears, the little small ears, uh, when the corn is soaking in July. And then you end up with a really nice looking stand of corn with no ears in it. And it's way too expensive to plant something like that for them just to nibble on during the summer. There's a lot better things for the deer to eat during the summer, like beans or a clover. This year, what I'm going to do in all of my corn plots, I'll probably end up with maybe about 12 acres of corn, and I'm going to have it all fenced with the hot zone fence from the non-typical wildlife solutions and that's one of our new sponsors this year we brought them in after the success we had with that product last year I fenced a, a one acre uh, soybean plot and it, it did great compared to some of the spots nearby where the deer were able to get in and graze on it a lot more heavily Scott Peruca put it in on his farm he had about a one acre plot that he put the fence around too and it did really well so Without the hot zone fence, both of those plots would have been lost. So that fencing system is going to open up some additional options for me this year with corn. I think uh, most of my my uh, grain food plots are still going to be beans. Probably, you know, 50% to 60% beans. You know, 40% corn. I try to run about 75% grain in all my food plots and about 25% clover or big and beastie and then I'll rescue any of my grain plots that fail. So we keep, we, we always have food. That's the main thing because if you've got the food, you've got the deer. And we do a lot of late season hunting here and that really does revolve around the food. It isn't nearly as critical during the rut as it is during the late season. Uh, early season and late season, it's all about the food. During the rut, you've got a lot of travel routes and, and so forth that you can hunt. Well, that's my that's my plan for this year. We'll dig into it more in the coming weeks as we get into actually planting these plots. But uh, to recap the strategy, small plots, 
are going to be in a rotation, Clover, the Big and Beastie. The bigger plots are in a rotation of corn beans, and then this year, uh, really going to uh, spend a lot more energy making sure that my corn does well by using those hot zone fence systems. But this morning didn't work out for us. Just a good excuse to get out and walk around and look at some food plots. Well, I appreciate you joining me this week. We'll see you right back here again next week for the next episode of Midwest Whitetail. And remember to always dream big.